talking to Mark Kamau of UX Lab. Mark, what is UX Lab? Um, the UX Lab is um, a service for the, the tech community in Nairobi and Africa by extension that helps the community build smarter solutions for solving African problems. Um, over the last decade, we've had a lot of enthusiasm with technology and a lot of designers and developers building technologies intended for the African consumer or for the African population to solve different social or economic problems. But what has happened is we've focused quite a bit on the technology but then not focused on the user. So most of the time you'll find a lot of the technology that is built has a mismatch um, with the needs of the user. Give me an example. So you will have people build um, a very complex um, mobile phone application with a lot of bells and whistles that demonstrated to his peer technologists looks very, very impressive. But then you find that the people it targets um, sometimes have functional illiteracy problems so that they cannot, uh, for instance... Uh, or indeed literacy problems. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, maybe even the population is illiterate mm. and therefore it becomes very difficult for them to use this uh, technology. So bringing a user-centered approach uh, to designing solutions so that they're smarter and they're contextualized to the target population is what we're trying to bring to uh, the community. So we say, let's put the user first and then technology second or whatever the solution second. And by doing that, what you're doing is addressing a real problem. And in fact, first of all, understanding what is the biggest frustration and then how then can you help them uh, solve this problem or this challenge that they're facing. So you bring together groups of people, often in rural areas, um, to talk to them in the first instance about what the problem is rather than the technology. Exactly. Uh, we actually, yeah, we talk to people to actually define the problem and after we understand what, they are, what, 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 are the, prob what the problem is to quite uh, a, 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 a good extent, then uh, we embark on finding out, okay, what are the possible solutions and then whatever the solution um, that is um, that comes out of that um, is prototyped and actually we go back and try and verify that on a very low fidelity to actually understand okay this is the solution that we propose what do you think of it if you try and use it what do you think is missing or what do you think is unnecessary so basically you're using a very lean and agile method to actually come to a solution without uh, spending a lot of resources you use a very low fidelity prototype so that you can test and verify the solution before you go back and build it. So it's a process that involves the user all through the development, but also it takes some of the cognitive load off you because you don't have to think about everything. Um, you focus on what you're good at then, because one of the problems we see right now is developers and uh, the software developers and the tech community taking all the cognitive load. Mm. They try to figure out what the problem is themselves. They try to figure out what the solution is themselves. It's a lot of work. Mm. So in fact, we're saying... And work for which they're not often qualified to exactly, do. You're not, uh, exactly. And if you get it wrong, it's a heck of a lot of hours mm. you've put into it. And then to find out that it's wrong is super frustrating. It takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of time. So if you use a user-centric approach, you're actually sharing uh, this cognitive load and you're verifying so you actually uh, um, you know um, that you're doing the right thing off the bat rather than going all the way and finding out that you've done something wrong. So what are the recurrent um, issues that you find when you run these groups? Well, um, w especially in rural communities and one of the topics that people have been trying to deal with is working with farmers. and. A lot of farmers uh, are supposed to have um, feature phones or um, basic, phones. Yeah, basic phones and therefore the logical option for a lot of techies is to actually build a mobile phone application that focuses on SMS. But then often we've gone and found out that people are sometimes illiterate or lack functional literacy and therefore they prefer to use voice 
because they cannot contract, uh, uh, construct messages. Mm -hmm. And that has been a big problem because a lot of mobile applications that we're trying to, that come through our doors, actually focus on SMS. And therefore having to go back and rethink the strategy, again, it's not very pleasant once you've spent quite a bit of time building whatever it is that you did. But then that's one of the misconceptions that people who have basic phones um, predominantly rely on SMS. Yeah. Um, Whereas in fact, it's yeah, only a percentage. Of yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. We're, we're finding that there's quite a huge segment that is not reliant on SMS, mm -hmm. but actually prefer voice. So what's another problem that's also fairly dominant in these discussions? Uh, what, uh, the, other, uh, the other problem we find is when people try to have um, online uh, payment systems uh, or, or sell things online, we find that the payment uh, methods or gateways sometimes can be a, a source of huge frustration. People might want to buy a service, but then what it takes to actually buy that service is very, very cumbersome. So there's a little bit of um, problem with the, the user experience of buying a service here. And I think... You were mentioning earlier sometimes the requirement to write down a, a exactly, very complicated exactly, code. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you have a payment gateway that gives you a six digit or seven digit code uh, and that is sent to your SMS that takes 15, 20 minutes to get to you. Mm -hmm. And basically you say, okay, I want to buy the service. I want to buy this service and then the code you say they say okay you'll receive a code mm. sometimes it takes 10 minutes sometimes 20 minutes and even when you get that code it's such a complex code that you cannot memorize and therefore when you're told okay go to the next screen um, three screens later it says okay put that code in and you cannot remember it so it's almost like you need a piece of paper to actually write the code mm. so that you can put it on your mobile phone but sometimes you don't have a piece of paper to go back to the SMS and then remember a couple of digits, go back and put them in. So it can be a, a source of frustration and uh, not optimizing the payment gateway so that it's easy to purchase services. So that's also a source of frustration for some services which are in themselves fairly good services. So if you try and understand why then is there no adoption, you find such frustrations. And There's too much friction in the interface. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they, there is. Um, um, and so there's very different uh, elements that come into play that we help analyze and we help um, uh, test so that we can find what is the best way to optimize the service so that the user has A, a, a good experience and B, and actually most importantly that it is solving an actual problem and B, that it's solving it in a way that makes sense and that it's optimized for the user.